We're talking about the Washington football game against the Philadelphia Eagles. For some reason, I believe they win in a squeaker cakes, even if it's Tyler or Taylor Heineke under center. Um, I feel even more confident if Alex Smith should get the start. As I mentioned, J.P. Finley came on with us and gave him a 60% chance based on what he saw yesterday. But you feel otherwise. You've said you believe the Eagles blow them out. Yeah, again, I don't have any real rationale. It's basically the same sort of uh, confidence I have with uh, my fatties picks over the last six or seven weeks, which have been just the worst. I, I hope you've been fading me the entire time. I, you I could think, have made millions. I think Cakes' uh, decision and rationale is based off of the kind of the big letdown that mm-hmm. Washington has when it comes to these big monumentous games. And they've done it in the past, right? Just yes. a few but, years but, ago, chance but, to get in the playoffs, and but they at some failed. Point, at some point, you know, this fan base has to get rid of the, the woe is me, we're playing in a big spot in a primetime game, we're playing on a Sunday night or a Monday night game. Hopefully with Rivera, you know, that, that is instilling a different confidence and a different mindset for the team. At some point, the fan base has to get past all those those ghosts yeah, but, of years past. Yeah, but I think that's why there's some sort of trepidation there. Could be part I think, of it. I think that kind of plays into your... I mean, you really don't have that much rationale. Very you're little just rationale. Go, you're just going off of feel, and you're just I going just, off of history. For the most part. Most so, I think, so, I think that's, so I think that's with, with you know a lot of the fans. They really don't have that much rationale as to why that they why they would lose. Right. They just they just know the feeling of of coming up short in a big moment. Fowdies is mostly a tingle play, let's be honest. But I do think there's a potential for Jalen Hurts to have a big game because we've seen throughout the season that Washington has a hard time with mobile quarterbacks. That's what Hurts is going to lean on at this point in his career. We've seen it through the the few starts that he's made. He's not hesitant to use the wheels to his advantage. And I, I could see him with a 70-yard rushing performance and a score, maybe two, if they get down near, near the end zone. I think he's going to be a problem for them, even though his passing still leaves a lot to be desired at this point. All right, let's go back to the phones. Let's go to Vaughn in D.C. Vaughn, you're on with the Junkies. What's going on? Line five. He dropped. No Vaughn. All right, let's go to Keith in Colonial Beach on line six. What's good, Keith? What's going on, fellas? Happy New Year to y'all. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to you. Hey, long time, man. Been talking. I know, JP, I know you and I text occasionally, mm-hmm. but I uh, hope everybody having a, a great holiday season. I know y'all are working. I'm glad to hear y'all on the air. Thank you. And look, I just wanted, I just wanted to talk about, um, I think the key, I think it's going to be a 14-10 game. I do think Washington is going to win. I think the key is everybody's saying defense. I think the key is going to be Cam Sims and um, uh, Steve. What is what is? I don't know. Fifteen. I call him No Hands, but he's an all-time punt returner. Steven Sims. Uh, yeah, he got the terrible hands. If they can catch the ball, we can win. Yeah. And that's the problem because we're not we're gonna have few and far between good throws. So the throws that they may get somewhere catchable, we have to catch it. By the way, Cam and, and that, Sims had some dropsies last week too, Keith. I, I, absolutely, that's what I'm talking about. His hands. For some reason, he decided to wear shoes on him, I guess. So hopefully he he, work, he get, his, get his stuff together, man. Hey, but look, I wanted to ask, too. Um, I wanted to ask you, JV, if you know. Hey, uh, Bly Mookie, man, what ever happened to him? <laughs> Don't know, man. That's We've lost question. touch with some of the old schoolers. Derek from Logan Circle, Blind Mookie. There's some others who we just haven't heard from in years. Yeah, some other sh- ancillary fact, show characters. Sacktown Mike's another one who's gone it's dark Sacktown for like Mike. the last year. Now, we met Sacktown wow. Mike's son. That was at one of the parades, uh, the most recent parade, I guess the Nats parade. But that's even over a year. We haven't heard from Sacktown. Wow, I think and I drunk Mike. The last time I seen drunk Mike, he was getting kicked out of the, out of the Washington game. Well, that sounds very <laughs> on brand for drunk yes. Mike. Yeah, it's uh, very Keith, correct. Keith in Colonial Beach, you're about our age, right? Yeah, yeah, same age. Yeah, Why don't you blow age. cakes away with this? Because I think you told me one time on text. How many <laughs> grandkids do you have? I have seven. Think about seven that. Seven grandkids. Is, and seven. how old are you, Keith? I, I'm just. I turned fifty in April. I will be fifty-one this coming April. I'm born in seventy, just like y'all. It's amazing. And you met. Look, here's the funny thing, JP. You, I think my youngest son now calls in. Yeah. And talk. And he was the one that came with me when I got the TV from you. Yeah, he got a and, TV. You know, it, it, yeah, yeah. But look, it's uh, I got seven, man. I have five girls, 
and two boys. And no, the youngest. It's a beautiful thing. Six, you just you're just a young grandpa in my mind. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Keith. All right, brother. Y'all be good. Happy New Year. Let's go to our pal Jaime in Manassas. Jaime. Felicidades. No Jaime. Oh, he's gone. Let's go to Julian in Norfolk. Julian's on line hey, three. How you doing? What's this up, could Julian? be the last hey, caller we ever Good talk morning. to from Norfolk. <laughs> could be Julian. Yeah, be well, I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm actually from Gloucester County, which is about an hour north. Um, but I did graduate from ODU in 2012. That was the year that Taylor Heineke completely just blew up every stat there was. He set all kinds of records. I watched it firsthand. Um, I will tell you, I have complete faith in Taylor Heineke. Um, if he would have been in from quarter one last game, we would have won that game. He is a outstanding player. Um, he's working on his master's degree in engineering, so you know he's got the smarts. Um, expect to say if he's in the game, expect uh, the most out of him, and I think we're, we'll get a win if he's playing quarterback. I guess uh, Julian's very bullish on uh, Taylor Heineke taking over the reins if Alex Smith is unable to go. Now, it's great that you put up, you know, uh, gaudy college stats, but uh, he won't be playing Charlotte this weekend or whoever ODU faced back in 2012 whenever, whenever Taylor Heineke was there. Though he looked respectable in relief this past week. Just have and to hope know, that he builds on that if he's called upon this week. Let's go to line four. Mike in Charlestown. Mike, what's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, what's up, Mike? Hey, great. I'm a lifetime uh, Washington football team fan. Grew up in the area and everything, and been watching them over the years. And this year has been a really good year, I think. Uh, you know, I like where we're at. I, I liked what I saw with Taylor Heineke in the last game. Uh, when I first saw him pass, I thought he's got like a Fran Tarkenton kind of touch, a soft touch. Um, it looked to me like the receivers were having a hard time adjusting to that. They're used to having the ball zipped in there, so maybe in the game, you know, especially Logan Thomas looked like he was having a hard time with it. So maybe with some more reps, they'll get they'll get used to it. And um, you know, I'm kind of liking what I see. It's maybe a backup to Alex Smith in, in the game Sunday night. I don't know if he's gonna he'd be good starting, but I think he'd be definitely a good backup. I heard Chris Russell talk about this, and it made me think. Now, I'm not going to go with Chris's take on it because I want to leave it open-ended, Cakes. If you had to choose, who would you rather have come in in relief in the game? So it could either be Taylor Heineke comes in relief for Alex Smith or Alex Smith comes in relief for Taylor Heineke. I would rather Alex Smith is able to start, and then if he can't continue, you hand the ball to Taylor. Because you know Alex Smith has you know much more experience in a big spot like this than, than Heineke ever could imagine having. I yeah. want the guy with the experience that's kind of been there before. That you know number one overall pick, so many games under his belt. Look, I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of his clearly what his production is at this point in his career. But if you're asking me who's a better option to start the game, I think it's clear that it's Alex Smith. And if he falters, you turn to Heineke at that point, and hope he doesn't turn the ball over. It really is crazy that, it, look, we never expected that they'd have a chance for the playoffs. Right. And it's just the way the season fell where a bunch of teams at one point were 2-7, and seven, and Washington was one of those. And they went on a four-game run to get to 6-7, and seven, and you thought the playoffs are staring at you in the face, you just need to get one more win. But it's really crazy to think about it, that in potentially a playoff game, because if they win, they're in the playoffs, you have a guy who wasn't even on the roster at the beginning of the year, right? That became your quarantine quarterback, who may start for you in hey, the biggest you know game what? of the year. Give the staff and the front office credit for ha for having that guy in the pipeline. Because if they didn't, where would they be at this point with all the COVID restrictions and getting the guy in the building, getting him coached up? At, at least they have this option. It may not be the most attractive option, but he looked respectable when he came in. Last week, and he looked way better than Haskins. And I understand that Haskins was facing, you know, a tougher defense at that point, uh, a more pressing defense, because at that point, Carolina had a two-score lead, and they could back off a little bit. But Heineke didn't look terrible. No, he looked like he knew he, where like to he, go with the ball. Looked like he had good field vision. You know, you heard the Chase Young NFL Films clips. Yep, where Chase Young was impressed because he was ready. That was the impressive thing is. He certainly hadn't had a lot of work 
with the first team, but he was ready when, when his name was called. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't think it really matters that much who the trigger man is this weekend because I think you're going to see a very concentrated uh, target distribution to J.D. McKissick, Logan Thomas. <laughs> Those guys, especially if McLaurin doesn't go, if he's unable to go with the high ankle sprain, those guys are going to get all the work that they can handle and then some. You want to minimize the Simses, okay? And I think another thing that makes me think that McLaurin won't be there is Dontrell Inman was brought back. I think that's, that is a, that's a tell. That's a Terry McLaurin potential insurance policy. of him not being there, you get Inman uh, back on the field. I mean, he's not going to do much. He's clearly not anywhere near the ilk of a Terry McLaurin, but at least he knows the offense and he's dependable if you need him.